G'day, I'm James, and welcome to the beauty and the thinking behind quadratics. And today's topic is going to be completing the square. And I mean literally completing the picture of a square. Because the story of quadratics, although it's in an algebra class, is really about the power of area. In fact, we'll start off by talking about area today. In fact, we'll talk about particularly nice areas, symmetrical areas, because we'll learn today that symmetry is our friend. So what we're going to do today is going to seem completely off topic. What are we doing about talking about area and geometry in an algebra class? But here's the thing. I want to show you the true mathematical story of quadratics. It's rarely done. We're going to do it today together. And even though it feels like we're wasting our time on a side topic, it's not. We're going to be developing deep, true understanding of this topic. And once you understand something, I mean deeply understand something like a mathematician, you don't have to memorize anything. As soon as you understand it, you know it and you can do it. Now, of course, you might want to memorize some tricks and, and whatever's for speed for exams or whatever, but that's your choice. You don't actually have to memorize anything if you just understand it and know it. So I'm going to teach the story of quadratics over the next few lectures about the understanding and the true history of them, the story of area. And to motivate the story of area, I'm going to ask a puzzle. In fact, it's an age-old question. It's this age-old question. Why is negative times negative positive? Now, I know we've all been trained to say, well, negative times negative is positive because it just is. I want to know why. I want to know an actual mathematical reason why negative times negative should be positive, other than it just is. All right, the power of area and then power of symmetry. Symmetry is our friend. Let's get cracking. Let's talk about area because this is the story of quadratics. All right, here it comes. Okay, let's start on our journey of area. We're going to start with arithmetic, believe it or not. To me, a lot of arithmetic problems are really area problems. For example, consider 37 times 23. That's a geometry problem. That's about area. Because what I have in my head right now, when I see that arithmetic multiplication problem, I think, oh, it's a geometry problem about the area of a rectangle. The rectangle happens to be, say, what is it, 37 centimeters long and 23 centimeters high. In which case, working out the area of this rectangle is length times height would be doing that precise computation. So this piece of arithmetic is a geometry problem. What's the area of that particular rectangle? But the other thing is, I'm a mathematician. I look at these numbers and think, ooh, they're horrible numbers. I mean, I could work my way through them, but you know what? I don't want to. It's too hard work. So how do I avoid hard work? How do I make my life easier for myself? That's being a mathematician. And I look at this and think, OK, the number 37, very awkward. Well, if I chop it into two friendlier numbers, like, say, 30 and 7, that is chopped by a rectangle that way, and I work out this piece and the area of that piece and add them together, much nicer. In fact, I could do it again with the 23. It seems more natural to do 20 and 3, and actually chop my rectangle into four pieces like that. Now, my picture's not to scale, but I'm not worried. I think the information on that picture is still correct. In fact, the area of the whole rectangle would just be the area of these individual pieces, and I can just add them together, and working out those individual areas is fine, because look at this one. It's 30 by 20, so it must be 6 with a couple of zeros, area 600 centimeters squared. This piece, um, 7 times 3, 7 by 3, it's 21 centimeters squared. This piece, just doing a random order, 140, and this piece is 30 times 3 is 90. I can add up those four numbers pretty easily, uh, 600, 740, 830, 851. This must be 851. Beautiful. All right, so this arithmetic problem multiplication to me was really a geometry problem, and I used area to my advantage to make numbers friendlier for myself. But there's a bit more true about here. So I can do arithmetic this way, great, but then I can also start thinking about the behavior of numbers. For example, 37 times 23 was a 37 by 23 rectangle. If I rotated the picture 90 degrees, then I'd be working out 23 times 37. Well, of course, it's the same rectangle, just turned 90 degrees. It's the same area. So philosophically, I know this must be the same answer. This must also equal 851 without me having to actually do the work. In fact, this area model is suggesting something we like to believe is true of numbers. I'll write over here. For A and B in numbers, we like to believe that A times B it was always going to be the same answer as b times a. We like to believe that we can switch the order of numbers when we multiply them. Great! And that feels very natural, normal, and right. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Think of our story of mathematics, what we did as kids. First of all, we started with like positive whole numbers. We learned about multiplication like 2 times 3 and 7 times 8 and so forth. And then we moved to fractions. And we still like to believe, okay, this is fine, we can do rectangles with fractional sides. 
This is still true even with fractions. And we looked at maybe like irrational numbers. We like to believe, okay, it's still true for irrational numbers and all the rest. But we also believe this is true for negative numbers. At one point in our lives, we extended lives, we extended our number systems to include negatives. Now, here's the funny thing. Geometry won't let me have negatives if I'm being literally geometric. Yet we still like to believe that geometry is speaking truth about all types of numbers. We like to believe this rule holds for all numbers, even the ones that go beyond geometry a little bit. We like to believe that numbers, the order multiplication doesn't matter even for positive numbers or negative numbers. This is a belief. In fact, we can even draw diagrams like this, which wouldn't be correct if I put negative side lengths in it, but we like to believe that the diagrams are still speaking to this truth. In fact, that's the game I'm going to play. But that will help us answer the question, why is negative times negative positive? Now, let me recap what I just said. It's because we're motivated by geometry to have some beliefs about numbers. And once we have these beliefs about numbers, we then like to say it holds for all numbers, even negative ones, even though negative side lengths don't quite make sense for geometry anymore. However, we feel, still feel it's speaking truth. Okay, okay, let's get to it. Let's get to the question. Why is negative times negative positive? You know, obviously some things are fine. For example, we can do positive times positive. If I asked, you know, what's two times three? You'd say, okay, that's positive six. And you know, in this world, you say it's two copies of three. It's a three and a three. Yes, it's definitely positive six. In fact, we can also do positive times negative. If we think that way. We can think of that as two copies of negative three. So it'll be a negative three and a negative three, which makes negative six. So positive times negative is negative six. All right, but now things start to get murkier when I go the other way around. For example, if I did say a negative times a positive. Negative two copies of three doesn't actually make sense. Doesn't make sense. But, 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 people might say, just switch these around. And the reason why they say this is because they like to believe this rule holds no matter what for all types of numbers. Even though it's gone beyond the geometry, you can't have negative side lengths, we like to believe it's still true. In which case, if you're one of those people that believes you can switch the numbers around, this would be three times negative two, which is then okay, because that would be three copies of negative two. A negative two, a negative two, and a negative two is negative six. All right, so positive times positive is positive, positive times negative is negative, negative times positive is negative, and the question we have at hand was, at the very beginning, negative times negative. Whoops, there we go, it's negative two times negative three. All right, right then, that's problematic because it's negative two copies of negative three. I don't know what that means. So you say, oh, okay, we'll fix that. We'll just switch it around. But look what happens. If we switch it around, we're in exactly the same pickle. Negative three copies of negative two? Doesn't make sense. So we're stuck. So we're stuck. All right, all right. But here's the way around it. Here's what's really going on. Remember, we were motivated by geometry to say this. We like to believe this holds for all numbers. So that means we should push our geometry to hold for all numbers as well. So let me push the geometry literally. Here goes. Let me work out 17 times 18. I'm gonna do it four different ways. Crazy, four different ways. 17 times 18. That's a one there, there we go. Way number one, I'll do it as we expect. It's the area of a rectangle. It's 17 by 18, but let me chop, chop it up into friendlier numbers. Let me chop it up into a 10 and a seven, and a 10 and an eight. So far, so good, it's all right. Then we got uh, 10 times 10 is 100, seven times 10 is 70, 10 times eight is 80, and seven times eight is 56. So I've got 100 and 70 and an 80 and a 56. Uh, 150, 250 is 306. 17 times 18 is 306. All right, now let's push the geometry. We like to believe we can push the geometry to negatives, so let me do that. Let me change this picture a little bit and get kind of strange, not with the 17, I'll keep the 17 as 10 and seven, but let me think of the 18 as 20 and negative two. Remember, that's the game we're playing. We like to believe the geometry should still be speaking truth. In fact, is this speaking truth? If I worked out the areas, even though the geometry is a bit weird, 10 times 20 is to area 200. Seven times 20, 140. 10 times negative two, we're okay with that. Positive times negative, we did that, is negative 20. And 10 times, uh, seven times negative two is negative 14. What is it, 200, 340, take away 20, 320, take away 14, 306. Yes, 
even when we push the geometry to negative numbers, it's still speaking arithmetic truth. In fact, let me now get strange, not with the number 18, let me get strange with the number 17. Well, we seem to be in black now. 17, do 20 and negative 3. 18, we'll keep it as 10 and 8. All right, let's see, are the pieces the same? That is add up to 306, I bet it does. 200, negative times positive. We said we were okay with that, let's we'll push that away, sorry. Negative 3 times 10, negative times positive, we said it was fine, it's negative, negative 30. 20 times 8, 160, negative 3 times 8, negative 24. 200, 360, 330, take away 24, 306. All right, that's all right. Even when the geometry is getting a bit strange, it is still speaking truth. All right, can you guess what I'm going to do now? I got weird with the number 18, then I got weird with the number 17, Let's get weird with both numbers at the same time. Do I have space? Let's see, I'll do it down here. I think I've got space. I think you can still see. All right, here goes. I'll do 17 as 20 and negative three. I'll be weird with the number 17. And I'll be weird with the number 18, 20 and negative two. The math we know wants the answer 306. We've just done it, 306, 306, 306. It better be 306. All right, let's do it. 20 times 20, area 400. Negative 3 times 20, negative 3, negative times positive is negative, negative 60. 20 times negative 2, uh, positive times negative is negative, and negative 3 times negative 2, negative 2 times negative 3. That was the weird question we had. We didn't know about negative times negative. That was my question mark. Why should, what should negative 2 times negative 3 be? Well, look, 400. Take away 60, take away 40. That's 300 right there. There's a missing piece, and we know the answer just has to be 306. So what is the math telling us? The mathematics is telling us that negative times negative just has to be positive six. If we like to believe these basic rules of geometry hold for all types of numbers, then we are forced to conclude that negative three times negative two is positive six. Wow, there it is. In fact, you could prove that negative four times negative five has to be positive 20 by, I don't know, doing something like 16 times 15. If you worked out 16 times 15 four different ways, can you copy these pictures? I bet you'll be able to convince yourself that negative four times negative five has to be positive 20. Do you see why I chose those ones? All right, all right, beautiful, beautiful. But now we've got the negative and negative is positive, that means actually we can do these area diagrams in algebra class. Here's what I mean, look at this. 2x plus 1 times 3x plus 7. I can think of that as an area problem. I can think of it as a rectangle that's been chopped up into 2x plus 1 centimetres and seems natural to do 2x and 1. Chopped into 3x plus 7 centimetres, seems natural to chop that into 3x and 7. This piece will be 2x times 3x, which will be 6x squared. 1 times 3x is 3x. Uh, 1 times 7 is 7. 2x times 7 is 14x. And look, we've got a 6x squared. We've got a 3x and a 14x is a 17x. And we've got a 7. This must be 6x squared plus 17x plus 7. And we don't have to worry if x is positive or negative, because we've just chosen to believe that our geometry pictures are still speaking truth no matter what. So even if some of these side lengths are negative, we're not going to worry because it still speaks truth in arithmetic. And that's the point. That's the point I want to make. The area model still speaks truth in arithmetic even if we start to get strange with the side lengths because that's what we choose to believe about numbers. And voila, that's the power of area. And now let me introduce the power of symmetry with area and we'll see the power we're in for solving algebra equations. This is great stuff. Okay, here's a question. I've just drawn a picture of a rectangle, and I'll tell you that the area of the rectangle is 36 units squared. And my question to you is, what can you tell me about that rectangle? <laughs> okay, the answer is not much. I mean, you can tell me its area is 36, but you don't know what size the rectangle is. Maybe it's a four by nine, maybe it's two by 18, maybe it's four and a half by eight. You actually know nothing about that rectangle, other than what I told you, its area is 36. Aha, but what if I said this to you? I forgot to add one adjective. I forgot to tell you this rectangle is actually symmetrical. I've just added one word, it's symmetrical. Now, as soon as I tell you it's symmetrical, suddenly you know everything about this rectangle. It has to be a square. A symmetrical rectangle is a square, in which case you know it has to be six by six. You know everything. 
That is the power of symmetry. Once I tell you something symmetrical, all your unknown knowledge tends to collapse into full knowledge. That's often the case. In fact, let me give you a very specific example. Let me give you a classic textbook problem and show you how the power of symmetry cuts through all the usual answers and shows you how to get to the answer right away. But I need to clean the board. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so here's a very classic textbook problem. It often appears in algebra books on the chapters about quadratics. But do you know what? We can answer it already, knowing that symmetry is our friend. So without even having done quadratics yet, we can actually answer this question. Well, actually, what's the question? I better read it. A farmer has 40 meters of fencing, and she wants to use this to make a rectangular pen. So we'll have a rectangular pen made of 40 meters of fencing all the way around, 40 meters. Perimeter, 40. What should the dimensions of the pen be so that she gets a pen of maximal area? All right, so we've got a rectangle of perimeter 40. We want to know what the dimensions of that rectangle should be to get a rectangle of the biggest possible area. All right, all right. So I'm going to use the principle that, in general, symmetry is our friend. So I'm going to imagine I've got this pen here, and if it were symmetrical, so 40 meters, four sides, each the same, it would be 10 meter, 10 meter, 10 meter, 10 meter. That would be the symmetrical answer to this problem. But of course, I don't really know if it's symmetrical or not. In fact, one side is like to be a bit longer than 10 meters, like 10 meters plus a bit more, so 10 plus x, 10 plus x. And in which case, if that's 10 plus x and 10 plus x, and it still has to add up to 40, then it's to be 10 minus x, 10 minus x. So here I've written a most general re uh, rectangle, but in terms of how far off is from being a symmetrical answer. It's 10 plus a little bit, 10 take a little bit, 10 plus a little bit, 10 take a little bit. So I'm going to phrase my answer in terms of how far off is it from being symmetrical. Okay, now we want the maximal area. So what's the area of this, this particular rectangle? Well, the area, I'll just write A for area, would be its length, 10 plus x, times its height, 10 minus x. Right, so there's a little piece of algebra in there, so I expand that out. In fact, I can actually use my area model on the side. In fact, I'll do a little side problem. 10 x, 10 negative x. So I get 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times x, negative 10 x and uh, negative x squared. x times negative x, great. So I've got 100, 10 x, take away 10 x, no x's, minus x squared. This is 100 minus x squared. Oh, so the area is given by 100 take away x squared. This is lovely, because what did the question want? It wanted the maximal area. So what should x be to get the biggest possible area? If the area is 100 take away x squared, we want to take away the smallest amount possible. We want to take away nothing. That tells me to get maximal area, put, or oh sorry, choose x equals zero. X has to be zero. In which case, the rectangle is indeed 10 by 10 by 10 by 10. 10 plus zero, 10 take away zero, 10 plus zero, take away 10 by zero. It actually is a square pen. Area must be 100, and that's the maximum it can be. Voila. By playing with symmetry, by asking how far off from the symmetrical answer could, would our problem be, gave us the answer right off the bat. Isn't that beautiful? Symmetry is our friend. All right, so I've laid the groundwork now for the story of quadratics. So our next job is to talk about these quadrus equations. Coming up next.